Hi boys and girls. So today we're going to be working more with solving equations and up until this point every equation I've given you has had whole numbers but of course we know whole numbers are not the only numbers that exist in the world so now it is time to start practicing with some decimals. Um, we're going to start with addition and subtraction equations and I put these two together because adding and subtracting decimals has the same rule. For when you add and subtract decimals, you have to line up the decimal point. That's the only thing that you have to remember here. So now I'm going to show you my two examples and I'd like you to take out your notebook and a pencil and copy both of these equations down. Um, please try solving them by yourself first. Um, you do the same thing, inverse operations. Nothing is different. The only thing is it's a decimal, so just make sure you line up the decimal point before you add or subtract your numbers. Um, when you're ready, click play and we can go over the answers together. Okay, so now hopefully you've done this. Let's go over these answers. Number one says x plus 3.52 equals 12.7. Well, this equation has addition in it. So I'm going to do the inverse and subtract 3.52. Minus, now here's the important part. I have to line up my decimal. So don't start it over here. You have to line up the decimal point, 3.52. If the decimal point is not lined up, you're going to get the wrong answer. It won't make any sense. Um, so there is a blank spot up here. You can add a placeholder 0. 12.70 is the same thing as 12.7. Add that placeholder 0 there so it makes more sense when you subtract. Okay, so now we're subtracting 3.52 minus 3.52. That cancels out. X is over here. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do 12.7 minus 3.52. Don't forget to regroup. All right, we need to borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8. 6 minus 5 is 1, and then 12 minus 3 is 9. So 9.18 is my answer. That's it, same thing. Uh, for number 2 over here, we have y minus 4.6 equals 10. If this is a minus 4.6, I'm going to do the inverse and be adding 4.6 to both sides. Um, don't forget though, I have to line up the decimal point. Oh my God, Miss Felice, there's no decimal point in 10. Yes, there is. Where's the decimal point in a whole number? It's at the end. 10 is the same thing as 10.0, so add that in so you don't get confused. And now I can line up my decimal point. Four <laughs> point. Six. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add them. And then we're going to have 14.6. So that means y equals 14.6. And that makes sense because if I check my answer and I plug 14.6 up here, 14.6 minus 4.6 will give me the answer 10. Okay, so same thing. Just a different type of number. It's just not a whole number. Multiplication equations. Take a minute um, to copy these three equations down. They are all multiplication equations. 1.2 times m equals 5.52. 5, 5, 5 times x equals 22.5. All right. Um, so when we have multiplication equations, what is the inverse that we're supposed to be doing? division. So for all of these, since they're all multiplication equations, we're going to be dividing. Okay, so let's get started with number three. 1.2m equals 5.52. I know we need to divide these. 5.52 divided by 1.2. Don't freak out. We know how to divide these. We did this in the beginning of the year and you guys were great at it. So we're going to divide 5.52 divided by 1.2. Make sure you copy this down. Before we can divide, we have a problem here. What do we got to do? We got to move this decimal point over to the end. So since I moved that one once, I'm going to move this one once. And now 
this is where my decimal point goes in the answer. Now I divide like normal. 12 does not go into 5, but how many times does 12 go into 55? Four times, because 12 times 5 is 48. And then I'm going to subtract, and I know that 55 minus 48 is 7. Bring down my 2, and now I'm going to do 7. Uh, how many times does 12 go into 72? And it goes in six times perfectly. Right? And then we're done. So that's my answer. 4.6. M equals 4.6. Uh, take a minute, pause the video. I want you to try the other two by yourself before we go over them. When you are done, click play so we can check. Okay, now hopefully you've done these by yourself. 5 times x equals 22.5. We are going to do the inverse, and we are going to divide these numbers. 22.5 divided by 5. Now in this problem, do I need to move the decimal point over? No, I do not. This is already a whole number, so I leave it. 5 goes into 22 four times because five times four is twenty and then how many times does five go into twenty-five? Five times. So x equals four point five. And you would know that's right if you went back and you checked your answer and you multiplied five times four point five. It will give you twenty two point five as your answer. Number 5, 42 equals 3.5y. So since this is multiplication, we are going to do the inverse, and we are going to divide. Do I have to move over my decimal point in this one? Yes, I do. Move it over one time. Wait, where's my decimal point here? Oh, yeah, it's a whole number, so it's at the end. I can add a decimal to 0. Move it over one time. Here's my decimal point. 35 goes into 42 once. Then we can subtract. 42 minus 35 is 7. Bring down a 0. 35 goes into 70 two times. And that's it. So y equals 12. And that's my answer. We have only one more type of equation to try practice with my division equations so many of you look at these and for some reason you add or subtract I'm not sure why but a fraction is division this is dividing so when we do the opposite we are going to be multiplying let's try number six n divided by 4.9 equals 11 since this is division I do the inverse and I multiply 11 times 4.9. Remember, our multiplication is regular multiplication, and we put our decimal at the end. So we're going to multiply, we're going to multiply, we're going to multiply, and we're going to multiply. So you should get the answer 539. But now, where do I put the decimal point? I don't just bring it down, that's not how multiplication works. I have in my numbers up here, there's one digit after a decimal point, so I start at the end and I move over one time. My answer is n equals 53.9. Okay, um, so pause this video, try the other two by yourself, and then when you're done you can click play to check your answer. Okay, so x divided by 1.4 equals 8.25. This is division, so we are multiplying. 8.25 times 1.4. It's okay if the decimals aren't lined up, it's multiplying. Um, I'm not going to show all of the work for this. I'm just going to kind of jump to the end. Um, but you should get the answer 11... Well, I guess you don't know where the decimal is yet, but you should have, um, and there's a zero here, right? So this is what you should have at the end, 
And now we move over our decimal point once, twice, three times. So we go one, two, three. Your answer is x equals 11.55. For number eight, z divided by seven equals 12.91. We do the inverse and we multiply 12.91 times seven. Um, again, for time's sake, I'm not going to write out all of the work. I'm just gonna put what you should have at the end. When you multiply, you should have 9030 down here. I mean, 9037. And then we move that decimal point over one, two times, one, two. So x equals 90.37. Okay? So we're solving our equations the exact same way as we've been solving them, just now with a decimal instead of a whole number. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.